everyone. I hope you're having a good Postman Student Summit experience so far. My name is Jada Lillibo. I am a student at the University of Minnesota Twin Cities, and I am also a Postman Student Leader. I'm very excited to be talking to you all today at the summit, and I'm going to be talking about how I created an API for my website's blog. So a few months ago, I decided to create a personal website. I thought it would be a good place for potential employers to see projects that I've worked on or just learn a little bit more about me. And I also thought it would just be a fun little side project. So the first things that I started to work on when I was creating my website were the visual elements of my website, such as the photo you can see there, all the text on the page, the navigation bar on the top. And I did this using tools such as HTML, CSS, and React. And these are what is, are known as front-end tools that you can create the visual and aesthetic components of your website. And these tools were really great for a time. I was able to accomplish all of what I wanted to do with the visual components of my website. But I started to realize the limitations of these tools when I wanted to add a blog to my website. I realized that the simply front end tools wouldn't give me the functionality that I needed to create a blog post, add a blog post, update, or even delete. So I knew that I needed to, some, to add something else to my website. I, needed, I knew that I needed to add an API. And some of the reasons that I needed an API were that I wanted to dynamically render all of my blog posts. I wasn't able to do this with React because with React, I would have had to manually go in and change the code every time that I wanted to create a blog post. And that just wasn't a very desirable workflow for me. I didn't want to have to hard code every single one in. While if I created an API, I could just make a call to the API, like a GET request, and then I could have my front end display all of the, of the data that is returned from the GET request. And another reason that I needed an API is that I needed somewhere else besides my React application to store all of my blog posts. I didn't want all of the blog posts cluttering up my React application for reasons that I've already mentioned. So I had to learn some more tools in order to be able to build an API. And I did build an API, and I would like to share with you the three main components of my API and also the tools that I used to create them. So the first component of my, my API was a server. This is what I built that could communicate with my front end, like my front end could send requests to the server and then my server would send responses back to my front end. So I could get all of my blog data from the back end to the front end. And for this, I used Node.js. I decided to go with Node.js because I was already using JavaScript in the front end. So it seemed like a natural choice just to use JavaScript in the back end. There are other languages that you can use in the back end. You can use Python and Flask, Python and Django, or Ruby on Rails. But for me, Node.js was the best choice for my server. The next component was the server routing. And this is what routes all of the front end's requests to the, to the server. And it basically just organizes all of the requests and makes sure that the correct data is being sent back. And this also creates all of the API's endpoints. So whenever I would send a request to the URL of my API, the, um, the server routing was creating the, that API endpoint. And for this, I used the Express.js library. Again, it's a JavaScript library that's pretty easy to pick up, and it was suited well for my small application. And the third component of my API was the database. This is where all of my blog posts were stored and the server would send the database information whenever a new blog post was added or deleted. And for this, I used MongoDB and their cloud service MongoDB Atlas. The great thing about MongoDB Atlas is that it's free to host one database. Um, with other database hosting services, you usually have to pay some kind of charge. So that's the really nice thing about MongoDB DB Atlas. And then, Finally, I had to host my server. 
because my server had to be hosted because my front end was hosted on the website. So if my front end wanted to make requests to my server, my server also be, had to be hosted. So I chose to host it with Heroku. Heroku is pretty easy to set up and they have a great command line interface that makes it pretty easy to deploy your backend or front end application. It's a pretty great service. Um, and in case you're kind of confused after going through all those components, here's a diagram that explains how my web application functioned after I implemented the API. So I use the controller view model schema, and this basically means that there's three parts to my application. There's what's known as the view, and this is all of my front end code, my React, my HTML, HTML and my CSS. And then there's a part called the controller, and that's my server, the Node.js and Express.js. And then the model is my database, which I used MongoDB Atlas. And in this model, the front end and the controller will only, or the view and the controller will only communicate with each other, and only the controller and the model will communicate with each other. The view and the model will never directly communicate with each other. And the reason for that is just to have some separation of concerns within the application. If I was making a bunch of database calls in my front end code, it would get kind of messy pretty quickly. So we just have that middle controller to just kind of organize the flow of data within my application. And I also use Postman to test and send post requests to create new blog posts. So whenever I want to add a new blog post to my website, I just send a post request with the JSON of my blog post to the URL where my backend is hosted. And this was a really great tool to use during the development of my API. And I'm just really glad this tool exists. <laughs> Um, so if you guys are interested in learning about creating your own API after listening to this, um, I would like to share some of the resources that I used to learn how to build my own server and API. And the first resource that many of you probably already know about is freecodecamp.org. Um, freecodecamp is a really great website that has free tutorials and uh, free interactive coding exercises that you can learn a lot of things. Um, I personally used it to learn JavaScript. And um, JavaScript is a really great language to learn if you're interested in API development. Um, all of the tools that I just shared, you need to know JavaScript to use them. And also, if you're using Postman, um, the language that you have to use when writing test scripts is JavaScript. So it's a really great language to learn if you're interested in APIs, and FreeCodeCamp has a very robust and thorough tutorial on JavaScript. So if you're interested, it is free just at FreeCodeCamp. So I'd recommend that resource. And then another resource that many people may not know about is fullstackopen.com. Um, this is a massive online open course created by instructors at the University of Helsinki in Finland. And um, this is a really great resource. It's like an entire course on full stack development for free online. So you can learn um, some of the front end things of web development like React, JavaScript, but you can also learn some server side programming and learn how to build your own API with Node.js and Express.js. And this is what I use to learn how to build it for my web website. And um, it's really great. They have a thorough course material, and they also have interactive exercises that you can do. So check it out if you're interested. And then the last resource is YouTube. I mean, everyone knows about YouTube, but it's great that there's just so many free, awesome videos from people who are willing to teach you things. And if you just like want to learn something, there's probably somebody who has like created a YouTube video on it. So like if you're just interested in learning more about APIs or specific JavaScript things, I would recommend just like going on YouTube and seeing if you can find anything cool to like learn about. And yeah, those are all the resources. Feel free to check them out if you are interested in this stuff. And um, that concludes my talk. Thank you all so much for listening. And I hope you learned a little bit more about APIs from this talk. Thank you so much.